Coming up on today's episode... Welcome YouTube viewers to the uh, DERB workshop and I am here sitting here uh, today going to work on this Panasonic uh, SAPM12 I believe is the number. Um, you probably saw in the evaluations that uh, this was not the, the easiest one to fix. Obviously that Sony, little Sony was that there basically wasn't anything wrong with it and I just dabbed the uh, lens of the uh, laser a little bit and it works fine. So, But this one was close because uh, no power or no, you know, when you turn the power on nothing happens. That's generally one of the easiest problems to troubleshoot and in this case it was also, especially after we found the big dent on the corner. That was pretty pretty good indication of what the problem was. So, um, like I said, uh, you you probably you saw the uh, later on video of it and saw what the uh, damage was. So, um, anywho, that's what we're going to be working on today, repairing that, and then we will test it once we get it repaired to see if it is working, and then further evaluate that system to see if it, all the rest of the stuff is working or not. So, I want you to stay tuned for that, and we will get right into it right now. Uh, welcome back again at YouTube, uh, here with you at the bench. We are looking uh, at this joint there, this uh, break here. And I think I'm going to start there. I, I think what I'm going to do is um, grind some of this uh, coating off and try to uh, establish a decent uh, piece of wire across here soldered on both sides and that's what I think I'm going to try to do on this repair to repair this board what I think I'm going to do is basically scope if I could talk it would help uh, scrape the coating off to get down to some bare copper and put some decent when I say decent I mean uh, fairly uh, substantial gauged wire across there on each of these brakes and that will in addition to fixing the break between the uh, traces, uh, will also strengthen the board uh, for future problems that may incur. And uh, so I think that's what I'm going to do. The way this is designed, I, I was when I picked this up to put it up here, I noticed right, right away this tops is is rather flimsy compared to the substantial weight of the transformer, and I'm sure any 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 um, variation in uh, moment, momentum or whatever you want to call it uh, would cause that to do that because there's it's rigid up here as far as being connected to the uh, there's a uh, uh, not a standoff but a uh, slot that it connects to both this this spot and this spot and so as such any kind of you know vibration or whatever like like the uh, dropping of the case would cause that to to flex really bad and i think that's what that's what injured our our board so all right as promised i do have my wire in there now it's hard to see now because i've got soldered so well but it basically runs from here to here down to here and there's the end of it you can barely see it sticking out but and what I did was I tinned the wire itself and then I heated up the joint there with all the solder in it and dropped the S onto it with the uh, aid of the hemostats there and uh, once I got it down there and soldered I, I held it until it, it solidified and then uh, I uh, went back in and filled in places you know that uh, looked a little bit light as far as the solder was concerned so again there you go that is a good good solid connection now and like i said it it it, it does help you know it's got a, the basically the s uh, the long, length long part of the s runs through here where the crack was and you have a, a leg going up here and a leg coming down here so that should be a good fix i think so that's the plan anyway from here to here there the, the crack is here so that doesn't affect this 
and it doesn't affect this because of the crack. Uh, I think all the way down through here, as a matter of fact, I don't believe there's any affected here until it gets right to these small ones. And I tell you what, these small ones are going to be hard to fix, but, you know, that's what we're going to have to do is fix those. Okay, fix number two is in. We're going to hook up the, uh, what do you call it, the meter. Show you that we do have some continuity between the two points. If I can get a decent bite on each one of these. There you go. Difficult to see both of them. I'm holding both of them down there, but I am uh, on that trace. And there, it does have good continuity. So, And it is also pretty solid in there. Um, I don't know where you can tell, but there's the end of that wire that I put in. And it does basically shape, shape just exactly like that. And uh, I did the same exact thing. I heated up the uh, solder that was already on the connection that I had put put the uh, tin to wire and held the wire in with the hemostats on this end and then basically took the hemostats off and, and pushed down on it uh, with the soldering iron on this end got it all nice and heated and everything got it in place pretty good nice solid connection I believe and uh, that should fix that very well and it has already stiffened this up quite a bit so I'm happy with the way that worked out so I think for the rest of these I'm going to uh, basically do them off camera all right let me get to it and we'll go on about our business and see what happens all right I'm back once again I have everything fixed except for this area here and uh, this area is proving to be a little more difficult I've been scraping uh, insulation off or uh, coating off down through here as you can see I thought this wire here you can see copper there connected to this, but it appears that it doesn't. It appears that it just stops right there. Wrong. Okay, for this section, this is a blow up, slight blow up of the uh, image from the digital microscope. This is uh, obviously this trace here, and I, I did scrape off this here uh, after I did, took this uh, image here. And this is all copper in here, so uh, this goes straight over to this. Now, if you if you notice the crack, the size of the crack, the digital microscope brings it out quite clear. If you move that up, it's going to line up perfectly with that, and it's going to line up perfectly with that. So that is a full trace right there, and I think as such, I'm going to fix that first. Now, what I've done is I've uh, overlaid some more on this. And I've showed, I'm going to show you exactly what the traces are. So hang on, let me load that up. So there you can see the uh, uh, way I came up with this. Uh, again, that's the one I just talked about. This is the second one. You, can, you can't see it so good here, but if you look over here, you can see a clear path of this trace coming down here like this. And it comes right to this one. So that's obvious. I think the same thing can be said for this one. You can see the trace coming down this way, and it will end up here. It is a wider trace. That's, that's a giveaway there. Uh, this one here, uh, same thing. You can see it coming down through there like that, and it goes to that one. Now, this is one I cleared off the uh, coating of it, and you can see the copper it matches perfectly there. So I think that's my... Uh, uh, goal is to join those together. Now the first one I'm going to do is this one here. I'm going to scrape off enough of this uh, coating here to be able to solder and use a wire because I want this one as stiff as possible because it is right near the edge of this board. So I'm going to use a wire here to do basically like I did the other ones and the rest of them I will probably uh, trace back to their uh, last known uh, solder joint as far as a uh, connection and then go the other way and trace down that way and get a solder joint. I've already done a few of these and I've found their origins I guess you would say. So as long as those origins are set, uh, tied together with a the wire then they, those will work just fine. I tried to uh, again do this one that's why I had this scraped off but I couldn't get the uh, solder to join up. The crack was just too big. All right, we back uh, once more on the uh, power supply board here. I think 
I have it all done now. Uh, as you can see, there are one, two, three, four wires there, and they all go to points up here. And uh, this, this will take care of this. Now, the fifth one is right here. I, I just did the uh, uh, repair right on the uh, trace itself. And that's a solid piece of wire there. And I have checked, checked each one after the repair to make sure the... And I traced these out this way. In other words, I went as far this way as I could and as far this way as I could. And trace to or uh, check to make sure the continuity was there, and it was on all of these connections. Now, obviously, uh, the other repairs I made was this one here, main one. Uh, that's the one with the S wire that goes through there, like that. This is just a, a, a L shape, or well, whatever J shaped uh, wire here, and that one's done. And again, checked for continuity. These three here, one, two, three have been repaired and again checked. All the rest of this is checked out through here. There's no more crack over this way. Now, uh, like I say, it. Uh, I, I don't know how well it's gonna hold up. I don't know that for sure, but uh, uh, I can redo it if I need to. But like I said, I think it's, it's fine. I think with all the traces intact, it should, should, <laughs> famous last words, uh, should work out just fine and if we look over here here's our outputs right here and here and uh, I think what I'm going to do is just stick this back into the uh, chassis and uh, bolt at least two or three bolts down for the transformer to hold the transformer in and ground it if necessary and uh, go ahead and replug it in and just see you know, that's the easiest way to check, I think, because I have no way of knowing what kind of outputs there are supposed to be here. There's no listing on, you know, what the voltage is or anything like that. Same with this one here. And uh, let's take a look at that on the other side. So you can see, I don't believe there is any... Well, yeah, it does, actually. Huh, okay, it has S... So you can see the uh, wires, or not the wires, but the uh, sub B, S2, S1, ground and ground. And on this one up here, um, I have ground, sync, looks like, oh, system sync, 6 volt, I think is what it says. Just looking at it. Um, can't tell about the other two, but uh, again, uh, so... Like I said, there are some indications of what's there. Now, as long as everything else is, is okay on this board, which I have seen no reason why it shouldn't be. Uh, you know, that, that, as I said before uh, in the original thing, this is going to depend on what was wrong with it before the crack, uh, before the uh, board got broke, because it's possibility that, uh, you know, something else went all out on the stereo and uh, people got frustrated as often happens they dropped it they threw it <laughs> you know and that could be a this this actually could be a secondary problem uh, as to what the real problem was to begin with we have no way of knowing that until we hook it up so let's get to that and do that and see what happens all right well what you can see the red light over here is lit up and there's some somewhat of a display it will come on now well i think yeah there it comes uh, gives you a hello message. Uh, I do have the uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, make sure I get the volume down. Uh, so basically, it is in the demo mode. I I believe uh, you know I I I have a hard time figuring these things out. <laughs> I do have a, a what do you call it for it, and I'll I'll definitely get to look at it and see if I can figure out what the the deal is. Obviously, this is demo, though, because you can see it's going through all the different things. Uh, there's a minus demo here. I don't know if that's got to do. I don't know what that means. Uh, just pressed it. Uh, it seems like it's going dark again. I don't know. So maybe that's where it... No, I guess it's going back. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, that part seems to be working. Um... Again, 
Uh, I think maybe hook some speakers up to it and see what's going on with it. Uh, I think that would be the best course of action. And uh, we'll go from there. So stay tuned. All right, I am back once more. Um, I do have speakers now hooked up to this device. And as you can see, I think from the display, there is track one of the first CD. As you can see, a circle around that. Um, it is on 27 because I've already tried to play it. And I'll play some more of it. Only So there you can see uh, the CD at least is working. The open close of the uh, uh, drawer door up here. You can see that up here. This works. I'll show you that. Now I'm a little bit confused. I'll have to get the manual and find out how to load the changer up because to me it looks just like you put a CD in and it stays in one position. That's it. So that's when you close it, it, it goes right to the reading part of it. As you can see, it is reading now, I think. There yeah, are 20 tracks, time, and a lot. So uh, I just wanted to check, make sure that part of it's working, and so that is. So I think we ought to move on to the tape next. Uh, switch to tape. And it's auto reversing. Well, oh, uh, not sure if it's working or not can't tell didn't seem to do anything did it it's just got 0, 0.0 or whatever on that I don't know what that means it is rewinding it does stop uh, let's see if we can get it to play it's doing something I think it's at the end of the tape. I think it was reversed. Because it is, it is doing something. So let's see if we can stop that. Uh, let's go fast, fast forward. Get it to the end. Now yeah, there's the end. Now I don't know if it's going to automatically switch. Apparently not. I don't know what the selector does either. Let's try that. That's switching. Now it seems to be doing something. Some noise coming out. Oh, there it is. Might be a little bit wobbly. Of course, I haven't cleaned it or anything at all. Yeah, it definitely needs some cleaning. So, we know that. And it does work. It's just maybe a little bit, little bit wonky on the speed. But other than that, it's working. Again, I haven't cleaned anything. So, we're going to call that a win on that. And I'm going to get that out of there so I can get in there and look at it a little bit closer. Uh, you guys probably can't see what I'm seeing, but again. Uh, see the pinch roller there, it's just a little bit gunky. Of course the uh, tape head probably needs a good cleaning. And as I don't know which one I'm using here, but I think it's the, the one on the uh, right that I'm using. And the one on the left has also got some gunk on it. So that's going to need a good cleaning to, to be performing, I think, better. It's actually working, though, so that's a good, good sign, I think. See, now, all this stuff on here, um, I, 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 haven't, I see tune mode, maybe. That doesn't do anything when I press it. Um, selector, maybe. A, oh, there it is, AM. Nothing on AM. Aux. Ox works, so we've got our Bluetooth CD. Now, where was <laughs> where was AM <laughs> or FM? I'm sorry. Well, that's interesting. I guess I'll have to find the uh, um, old tuner band. I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. I didn't look far enough. I guess I could put a uh, 
clip lead on the antenna and see if I can get some stuff because I think it's just going to keep going until I do. So let me get that done and I'll bring you right back. Alright, well you can see the uh, tuner does work just fine uh, with an antenna. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to say that's working well. So we have checked out the CD. The CD seems to work fine, other than the changer function. We haven't checked that out. Um, so, again, uh, I'm thinking this thing is pretty much fixed as far as uh, the power supply problem is concerned. It seems to be working perfect. Now, it does concern me a little bit that this really doesn't seem to switch off. Uh, I don't know what the deal is on that. Maybe that's just the design, way it's designed. But if you take and press that, you hear, you see goodbye. Uh, but then it stays like that. I do believe. Well, you got the you got the display there. It's just kind of maybe that's just a characteristic of always being plugged in because the ACN is always lit up. It looks like. Well, see, it went right back to demo. You know, I I, I don't know if you're supposed to hold that in. No demo. There you go. That seems to be working. All right. Well, I guess you just have to hold it in to make it go away. But still, the AC end is lit up because I think I think anytime it's plugged in, I think that's because AC is present. I think that's supposed to be that way. I don't know for sure, but again, it seems to be working. Like I said, the uh, tape deck needs to be cleaned very well. Uh, possibility a belt uh, might be uh, stretched or something like that causing part of the problem or dirty dirtiness like we found previously on these old tape players and stuff so there's got to be a way of, of loading the cassette uh, for the uh, magazine what are you going to call it for the uh, changer uh, I'd like to do that but uh, again we're going to call this complete for right now we may revisit this later on and, uh, well, I, d I would like to do the aux one time to see if, uh, uh, if our, uh, what do you call it, works. Let's, I wonder if I've got a cable for that. Let me see. Let me uh, bring you back, and we'll double check on that, make sure that's working, and that should do me. Everything, they say the time's supposed to heal you, but I ain't done much healing. Hello. So, the ox is working just fine. Okay, so that does confirm the aux auxiliary input does work. And as such, that means I can use my Bluetooth with it. And that will work fine. Which makes me happy. Uh, there, that's a pretty good indication everything works. Now, I may make a make an addendum to this video um, to uh, show the uh, operation of the uh, changer. Okay, well, I think I got it figured out thanks to y'all know Bob. <laughs> um, he was Johnny on the spot again with the uh, manual quote for how to do this. I wasn't quite clear even from that and I had to play around with it a little bit but I think I got five CDs in there and right now I'm playing the um, last song on the first track in hopes that uh, it will switch automatically to number two uh, to me not much worth anything if it doesn't do that uh, so I don't know if you have to use the CD manager to do that or not or if it just picks it up or whatever but we'll find out here very quickly, I hopefully. Hopefully? I hopefully. <laughs> now, I haven't set the clock yet. That's another function that uh, uh, I think is this has on it. So, again, it, it is working very well. I do like the sound. I did play around with the... Uh, very good sound. That's set on heavy. I don't know what the difference is. I, somebody said that was rock, so I don't know. I'm going to, as soon as I get done with this, this clip, I'm going to uh, turn it on to the radio or CD. I don't know. We'll see. And let it play while I'm editing video and things like that. And uh, make sure everything is good to, to last. I mean, it's one thing to get it to work one or two times, but, you know, does it work 24 hours? 
<laughs> so that's the kind of thing. Burn in, I guess, is what you call that. All right, I think we're getting towards the end this time for sure. I sure hope so, anyway. Well, seems to be going to two. That would be just exactly what we want to do. If it works. Should be. There it is. Picks right up. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And uh, so that's really all you can ask. Let's let's take a look at the. Uh, I want to show you the results of this, and we can take a look at the repaired board. And you can see there's that slot I was talking about. It fits in. There's the other one that fits in there. Uh, so all those are are good and working right. So everything apparently is correct. Uh, obviously, it's working. So. I guess that was the whole thing about this. It must have got dropped. And once it got dropped, it didn't work. And then it was put on eBay. And I picked it up. Yay! <laughs> this was really not that bad a repair. Uh, it uh, took a little time to get all these traced out and things like that. Uh, these two, or this actually these one, two, three, four, five original or... Uh, First ones I did were not bad at all. Just a matter of, you know, basically putting a wire on these two and uh, basically uh, just soldering uh, the traces back on these. And that's all you really need to do. Now, I did notice, other than the fact that it's it's in there right now, it should stay there because you can see it's pretty solid in there other than the, the give that the uh, CD has. And I think once that back is put on it, I believe that even goes away. So, uh, you know, it should be should be good, I think. I hope. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to button this thing back up and uh, get it back uh, like I, I want it. I don't think, again, let's look in the tape player mechanism here a little bit, if we can. I don't think there's anything... Other than taking that out completely, which it is possible, uh, not easy, but <laughs> possible, um, that could be taken out and I guess gone through and cleaned and maybe check the belts and things. But for right now, I just kind of wanted to get it working and that's what we've done. So at some later time, I may go through all of these units and do some major stuff to them if, if it's needed or whatever. But for right now, again, it is working. That makes me happy. And uh, so I'm, I'm just call this good. So I think we're going to probably do a preview right here. There is room in there, I do believe, to get that in there. And I think it would either set one way or the other just a matter of getting the hole drilled in the correct spot now that you've seen the preview uh, we can uh, continue on our way to the end of this video and you guys have a great day thank you so so very much for watching and we will see ya yeah <laughs>